It was the culmination of five year long studies when 14 students and two teachers of the Dr. John Garang Memorial University in South Sudan went on an excursion that led them to major spots of research and environmental activities in neighboring Uganda and Kenya. First station of the journey was Lake Victoria, the largest tropical lake in the world and the principal source for the River White Nile. Several scientific institutions along the shore of the Lake Victoria address in their research activities the pressing environmental problems the lake is facing. The National Fisheries Resources Research Institute in Jinja is one of six public agricultural research institutes in Uganda with focus on the lake. A sampling and demonstration tour with the institute's research vessel Hamakop is a highlight of the students' visit to the institute. Radar equipment and an echo sounding based fish finder help the crew to orientate even in the night and to find larger congregations of fish. Length measurements with special rulers are an important tool for all fish stock assessments. Meanwhile, the kitchen staff takes care for the group with great hospitality. It's not too difficult to deploy the trowel net. However, bringing out the other bots that keep the net open horizontally seems to be a little problem to the staff. They later explained that they had no much exercise for nearly one year due to scarcity of funds to run the research vessel. Finally, the otter bots are outside without anybody being hurt, and the trowel can start. In the radio operator's cabin, the students get a first-hand tutorial on how to operate, read and interpret the ship's echo sounder and sonar equipment. Then they have 
trust is at the bottom. Yeah. So these ones are the brain, like the computer, the CPU, the body. And they send the message to the the After trawling for about 30 minutes, the net is holed and everybody is full of expectation and wonders about a gigantic catch. But it is a real disappointment. The net is full of small fish and only a few half-grown Nile perch are in the buck. However, each hole provides valuable scientific information for the scientists about the state of the lake and its fish communities. Even these small fishes of the genus Hemichromis will find their way to the local markets, considered by many a delicacy when fried. Fishermen and local population can hardly afford the expensive Nile perch, which is mainly exported after being filleted. A second trawl on another course now brings a better result. Nile perch, African catfish and tilapia now dominate. A clear indication that the fish stocks are not evenly distributed. The students learn that many of the Nile perch are undersized, giving witness to overfishing. More fish is caught than can be replaced by reproduction and growth. Participating in field research, here measuring the African catfish, is an opportunity and a practical exercise much enjoyed by the students from South Sudan. Next place to be visited is the Kajansi Aquaculture Research and Development Center, a joint project of the Ugandan and Chinese government. Here, the visitors from South Sudan admire the modern facilities of the center, which include grow-out ponds, fish breeding and nursery facilities, and an aquarium. For the future, the Ugandan Chinese project plans to engage also in research for large-scale breeding of Nile perch. The project's feed mill develops and produces special and improved feeds for different species of fish as a prerequisite for further development of aquaculture.
The feeds are also distributed to local fish farmers. The final discussion concludes this interesting day. More than 35 processing factories around Lake Victoria produce Nile Patch fillets for daily export. Following the shock for the processing industry, caused by the internationally revived 2005 video documentary Darwin's Nightmare about the living and working conditions in the processing factories and the social and environmental impact of uncontrolled exploitation of the lake, most companies no longer allow taking photographs and videos. Kisumu with bustling traffic and thousands of Boda Boda motorcycles is home to one of the best known institutions on the shore around Lake Victoria. Oceanala, the Friends of Lake Victoria, the Lake Victoria Center for Research and Development. Oceanala is a non-governmental organization which operates within the Lake Victoria Basin, focusing on the issues affecting the fisher folks around the lake. Apart from fisheries, Ozianala's programs include agribusiness projects with programs in horticulture, diary, water processing and environmental conservation. Ozianala also provides interventions on environmental management. The boat tour, organized by Ozianala for the guests from South Sudan, provides an insight into the major problems for Lake Victoria's ecological balance, overfishing and pollution. Human, domestic and industrial wastes form a great part of the increased influx of nutrients, fertilizing the water and leading to massive algae blooms. The greenish clouds of algae illustrate a memorable picture of these changes. Between the green masses of algae, the grey-brown spots show already dead algae, whose decomposition demands for a huge amount of oxygen. Consequently, the water's oxygen level drops, with dire consequences for all species. After returning from the very informative tour, Oceanala's lecturer explains how ecologically friendly toilets can contribute a solution to the problem of over-fertilization. We must manage the human beings through control of pollution. I wanted us to share with you the structure that is just beside us called an eco sun toilet. This is one of the greatest efforts that Oceanala has had across the East African region because we had a project on ecological sanitation. We understand that people around use either the flush toilets or the, the pit latrines. The pit latrines actually finally pollute the underground water and they also end up in our streams. So this is an example of a structure that we will share with you. I will want you to go there, maybe you see the compartments and how they are separated. We just had this as a demo, a demonstration unit 
for, uh, for learning purposes. So, and then the other important thing about the toilet is that you can see that the, the, the beneath is just water. Most of the surrounding communities in this place, the, 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 the underground water is very close. When you dig a few, few meters, you get water. So those same people cannot dig pickler trees because they are using the same water. So this is the most recommended type of toilet for a place like around Lake Victoria. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, the, 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 the other side, we have the, the metallic doors. We just open and then you scoop with a shovel the, the pieces when they are dried. What is the reaction of the farmers? Yeah, there are people, you take care of the water. There are people who have actually adopted this.